You don't have to go back to basics if you stay in basics. The steps made simple by Dan James. In the last video, we talked about step two. The spiritual principle behind step two is hope. At that time, we could only imagine the possibilities of being sober. As we move to step three, the principle behind step three is faith. And hope with a track record is faith. Now that we've been sober for a little while, we realize that our only problems aren't just alcohol. We have to deal with self-will. I have to turn back to the same higher power that relieved me of the obsession to drink, to deal with my self-will. I want to talk about some controversial things in step three. Look at page 63. These are some of the things that we're gonna be discussing that might be controversial. Many of us said to our maker as we understood him, God, I offer myself to thee, to build with me and to do with me as thy will. This is the traditional step three that we always hear about. But if you go down to the bottom of page 63, look at this. We found it very desirable to take this step, to take this spiritual step with an understanding person, such as our wife, best friend, or spiritual advisor. But it is better to meet God alone than with somebody who might misunderstand. And this is a suggestion of the book. And I believe what it's saying is that my sponsor could ask me to get down on a crowded restaurant floor in front of a bunch of people and do the third step prayer and ask God, I want to do better. Take away my difficulties, okay? But if I do it just alone, then the only reason why I'm doing that is just simply because I want to be better. It's a relationship between me and my higher power. So these are some of the controversial things that we're going to be discussing into step three. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to start on page 60 because that's where it begins. Next, we're going to move to step three. If you turn to the middle of page 60 in the chapter, how it works, and I have your highlighters and your pens out, being convinced that we're at step three which is that we decided to turn our will and our lives over to God as we understood him. And we talked about how crucial God as we understood him was in step two. If it wasn't for that, we'd all be sitting around arguing about whose God we should use. It's your own conception of God, no matter how inadequate is sufficient. But I would definitely choose a higher power that works, that I can actually stop drinking with. That's always the end and aim. And I'll call up to drinks to die. And step three is going to tell us some things. Just what do we mean by that? And just what do we do? The first requirement is we be convinced that any life run on self-will can hardly be a success. When I was drinking actively, alcohol was the elephant in the room. By this time, we've had the plug and the jug for a little while. Now I realize that I have other problems besides just drinking. That self-will in and of itself has caused me problems in life that I'm powerless over. And I'm going to turn to the same power that solved my alcohol problem to build my self-will. Most people try to live by self-proportion. Moving to page 61. We're still in the chapter of how it works. This is a very important note. He may be kind, considerate, patient, generous, even modest and self-sacrificing. When I took a close look at myself, I can be kind and generous because my motives are, I want recognition to be my ego. And these are some of the things we're going to be taking a careful look at in our character. As we begin to take a moral inventory, we're going to look for motives of our actions. All human beings are going to have different traits. On the other hand, he may be mean, egotistical, selfish, and dishonest, but as with most humans, he is more likely to have varied traits. The show doesn't come off very well. He begins to fight, think life doesn't treat him right. He decides to exert himself more or self-will. My goal is going to be to go over important pointers, but you're going to have to read most of this by yourself. I'm going to point out things that maybe we haven't seen or recognized in some of these steps. If we work the steps with another alcoholic, we have another set of eyes. 
and we can see things from an entirely different perspective. This program is not designed, or the book is not designed for you to read it by yourself. This is as far as I've got most of the time. Admitting he may be somewhat at fault. Be sure that other people are more to blame. And these are some of the important pointers to go over your new man or your poor woman. When you're going over steps with him or her, he becomes angry, indigent, self pitying What is his basic big troubles? Is he not really a self-seeker, even when trying to be kind? Outgoing love is the only emotion we never run out of. My sponsor, Bob Harry, used to say that all the time. If I practice the 12 steps as an action, I can live my way into sober thinking, but I cannot think my way into sober living. The 12 steps can get me out of self. Is he not a victim of the delusion that he can wrest satisfaction and happiness out of this world if he only manages well or self-sufficiency? As I've mentioned earlier, the book always describes the problem before it gets to the solution. And this is the description of what the alpha problems are. Self-will, even when we were not drinking, these are some of our character defects that we're going to rely on a higher power greater than ourselves to help us with. Moving into 4, 5, and 6, and 7, we're going to find out the details of our character defects in step 4. We're going to check them with another alcoholic and 5 to make sure they're correct. And then 6 and 7, we're going to be willing and humbly ask God to remove them. Of course, this is a lifelong process. I'm going to move on past a lot of these reading. I highly recommend you read some of them on your own. We're still on page 61 here. How it works. At the bottom, our actress self-centered egotistical, as people like to call it nowadays, moving to page 62. If the rest of the world would only behave, the outlaw safe cracker who thinks society has wronged him and the alcoholic who has lost all and is locked up. Whatever our positions are not most of us concerned with ourselves, our resentments or self-pity, this was one of the major paragraphs I heard in my early recovery. We're still on page 62 here. Selfishness, self-centeredness that we think is the root of our troubles, driven by hundreds of forms of fear, self-delusion, self-seeking, and self-pity. We step on the toes of our fellows and they retaliate. Sometimes they hurt us seemingly without provocation, but we have invariably find that at some time in the past, we have made decisions based on self, which later placed us in a position to be hurt. Now I could spend a whole hour talking about this one paragraph when I'm accepting things in my life that I could actually change and move forward out of, or I'm trying to change things in my life that I need to accept and I'm powerless over. When I get those things mixed up, then I'm always in turn. If I don't drink a day at a time, then I can experience the discomfort in life that's necessary for change and, and then get the wisdom to know the difference. The big question has always been, what is God's will for me in my life? And we start understanding this in step three, and it leads us all the way to step 11. When we have the intuitive thought or intuitive thought process, we're learning how in step three, we just made a decision, but it's going to take the rest of the steps before we start fine tuning this reliance. And what is God's will for me? But it begins in step three. I want everybody to understand this, that all the steps work together. I can't really work one without the other. That's very important to understand. So I used to choose relationships that weren't good for me. And I would make decisions based on self. I want this person, even though I knew that person isn't good for me. And I would blame them for all the misbehavior they did. But I knew that that was the kind of person that was. And I couldn't see past that. I was selfish in that sense. I always thought that selfishness was, I looked at it like a little kid wanting more candy. I can see today that my selfishness and self-centeredness is, I can't see anything past myself. Today I have learned a lot of lifelong lessons and I haven't drank since October 7th of 1994. And I've been in the alcohol phenomenon ever since that day. I had to accept my problem and I also had to accept the solution. In step three, I began the awareness or discernment that my self-centeredness and my self-seeking does not make my life more peaceful. That God wants me to be happy, joyous, and free. That's one of the biggest things I've learned in life and in this program. That some of my desires and what I want out of life does not necessarily make my life more peaceful and happy. And that's one of the reasons that we're going to turn our will and our eyes over to the care of God as we understand. 
something or a power that can see around corners when I can. If I would have gotten things I wanted in the beginning, it would have went terrible. So our troubles we think are basically of our own making. So I would get in relationships and I knew that person wasn't right for me. And in the end, I would blame her for everything that went wrong. But I couldn't see that it was decisions based on self, which later placed us in a position to be hurt. So our troubles we think are basically of our own making. They arise out of ourselves. And the alcoholic is an extreme example of self-will run riot. Though he usually does not think so, above everything else, we alcoholics must be rid of selfishness. We must or it kills us. God makes that possible. I really have to understand that I'm powerless over my alcohol and I'm also powerless over my defects of character. This program begins and ends with powerlessness. My second sponsor, Kenny W, used to say that all the time. And there often seems no way of entirely getting rid of self without his aid. Many of us had moral and philosophical convictions galore, but we could not live up to them, even though we would have liked to. And this is fairly similar to what we were talking about in step two, that many of us had moral and good convictions and are good people in life, but we could not get rid of our obsession to drink. And this is saying the same thing about my defects of character. I need God's help just as much as I did initially with the drink problem as with my self-will. And that's the reason why that we make a decision that we're going to do the rest of the steps. Or by this time, we realize that we have more problems other than alcohol. Neither could we reduce our self-centeredness much by wishing or trying on our own power. We had to have God's help. So now we're going to start getting into the solution a little bit. This is the how and why of it. First of all, we had to quit playing God. It didn't work. Next, we decided that hereafter in the drama of life, God was going to be our director. He is the principal. We are his agents. He is the father. And we are his children. Most good ideas are simple. And I think that's crucial. There's a part in the big book that talks about their spirituality and the simplicity of the program. Because of these little phrases that we hear in Alcoholics Anonymous, they last forever. Like, if you don't drink, you won't get drunk. They last forever, and they ring in our ears for years. But the long, elaborate conversations, we can't remember those. I can't remember those, but the simple things are embedded in our brain, so they have a lot of power, and this is what we're talking about in step two, and the other steps that you have to look backwards in some of these paragraphs. This will make sense in a minute. And this concept was the keystone of the new and triumph arch through which we pass into freedom. And this concept was the keystone. The concept that they're talking about is, first of all, that we had to quit playing God. The whole little paragraph right here. So we go back to pay, on page 63, when we sincerely took such a position. And that's the position they're talking about. What we just went over, quit playing God. And that whole paragraph. Sorry if these things are very simple. I'm going to go over them anyway a little bit. We're still on page 63. All sorts of remarkable things happen. We had a new employer. Be being all powerful, he provided what we needed if we kept close to him and performed his work well. That's an important statement. And performed his work well if we kept close to him. This is the third step prayer. Many of us said to our Maker as we understood him, God, I offer myself to thee, to build with me and to do with me as thy wilt. Relieve me of bondage of self that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties, that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. I think the important note in this is take away my difficulties, that victory over them may bear witness to those I will help. And that's going to be always going to be the solution in every step prayer. It's I'm going to ask God to help me with things so I can help other people. It's not going to be so I can go home and live a better life by myself. We thought well before taking this step. Sure, we were ready that we could at last abandon ourselves utterly to him. Now, I want to take a couple of minutes to talk about this next paragraph here. And we're still on page 63 here. The, the third step prayer right below it. We found it desirable to take this spiritual step with an understanding person such as our wife, best friend, or spiritual advisor. But it is better to meet God alone than with somebody who might misunderstand. 
I want to talk about this as an important point, that one of the things that maybe we don't actually see in the big book because we've heard so many things about step three or the third step prayer in meetings or other people have suggested us to do things. This, that we miss this, that one little paragraph right here, but it is better to be God alone than with one who might misunderstand. And that is an important point. And I think the reason is that what we were talking about earlier in step three was I can be kind and giving, but my motives are still for recognition. And I believe that what this is telling me is that the prayer I want to use is just simply because I want to get better because I, I can do a prayer in front of other people because I want other people to think I'm good. So the only reason why we want to come to God in the third step prayer is just simply because I want to get better. I have a desire to do better things in my life. And that's what this little one thing is telling me because I've heard people in meetings say that their sponsor told them to get down on their knees in a Starbucks or at a Burger King in front of everybody in Walmart. And I could do all that stuff if I want people to think I'm godly and humble. But if I do it by myself, which is one of our spiritual principles of our traditions, anonymity, it, I could practice a tradition in my personal life that I'm going to do good deed and I'm not going to tell anybody about it. They used to say, go out and wash windows in the parking lot. And if anybody sees you, it doesn't count. And we're going to start building that kind of attitude and deflating our ego through action and inaction. The wording was, of course, optional. As long as we express the idea of voicing it without reservation. This was only a beginning, though it honestly and humbly made an effect, sometimes a very great one was felt at once. So the ending of step three is ending right here on page 63 and the very top of 64. Everything from page 60 to 63 encompasses step three, which is faith. In the next video, we're gonna cover step four. All men of faith have courage. If I just make a decision, they used to say three frogs on a log and two of them made a decision to jump off. How many frogs do you have on the log? Well, of course three, because two of them just made a decision. So now we're actually going to do the action and to do that, I have to start an action of step four. And we're going to cover that thoroughly in the next video. I'm going to take a little bit of time to talk about step four. So that's my goal of all these videos, as I promised in the first one, in step one. We're going to make clear the pages all the steps are on. And we just finished talking about step three, which the spiritual principle is faith. And we're moving to step four, which the spiritual principle is courage. And it's very easy to see that this is the beginning of step four. Next, we launch on a course of vigorous action. The first step of which is a personal house cleaning, which many of us have never attempted. Though our decision was a vital and critical step, the decision they're talking about is step three. I made a decision. So basically what this is saying is though I made a decision to do this to step three, and that was vital and critical, it could have little permanent effect unless at once I followed up by a strenuous effort to face and be rid of the things in our life which have been blocking us. Our liquor was a symptom, so we had to get down to causes and conditions. Therefore, we started upon a personal house cleaning. This was step four, and we're going to talk about that in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And also donate to the seventh tradition. The link is in the description below to keep this material going. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the description. Thank you and God bless.